Thank you for tuning in to Investment Insight presented by McKay Wealth Advisory. My name is Hayden Prophet. Joining us today, we have Brent McKay to talk about Brent ETFs and mutual funds. Yes. What what are they really? Okay, so of course, mutual funds and ETFs are similar. You know, they're basically a group of a bunch of investments. So from diversification standpoint, what you're trying to achieve is have a little bit of everything in a portfolio or a lot of different investments within a fund. Um, mutual funds, of course, started became legal under the Investment Company Act of 1940, um, where the IRS said, hey, as long as you pay four dividends a year or you pay a capital gain every year when you make money and, and we get our tax money, we're happy for mutual funds to exist. Um, 1993 comes around, computers are have taken off and the you know ETF comes around, the exchange traded fund. And so what that basically means is it's more digital, it's more uh, faster, it's also cheaper. Um, and, and so that's where ETFs came around after that. Yeah, and so with those both, do they trade differently? Is there a way that- Great question. One, and is there some drawbacks to one versus the other on that? Yeah, so mutual funds will trade at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time, so you don't actually know your price till usually 5 or 6 p.m. that evening, um, but at 3 p.m. is when you do the trade. So if you thought the market was gonna drop and you thought you know 9-11 was gonna happen, Today, on a mutual fund, you can't get your money till the end of the day or until the market closes. With an ETF, you can trade that second. And so because they trade on the exchange, because they trade immediately, um, they're a lot more um, liquid in most cases. Now, there is some potential liquidity issues. If there was a real bad event, if the stock market was falling very quickly or going up very quickly, it's possible that you know, like, like a stock, you could buy at the wrong time because they mm -hmm. true, do trade like a stock. But generally speaking, you know, you can, with an ETF, you can sell right now as we're talking. Um, with a mutual fund, um, you have to sell at the end of the day. Um, and that also creates some problems because an ETF, because they trade so often and because they're computerized, because they mainly are indexes, which means they own a, a little bit of the S they own the entire S&P 500, let's say. Let's say you buy the S&P 500 ETF, the, one of the original ones, the original Spider then what you're doing there is you're on the whole market. So when you sell that, they know to sell 7% Apple or 7% of Microsoft. They know what to sell within that model to make it happen. A mutual fund, because they trade at the end of the day, they have to typically leave a lot of money in cash that's not invested in the stock market. Um, that money has to sit there in cash for people that are liquidating. And as we've seen over the last 15 plus years, more money is going towards ETFs than mutual funds. And so because mutual funds are bleeding money, um, they're having to leave even more cash in reserve. You know, you and I were looking at a fund yesterday, surprisingly, that had almost 8% of its assets in cash. Yeah, we actually, we pulled up the composition of it and that's what the holdings were, was a cash fund. And so, and you think about that, like that's a lot of money not earning much interest or as high, or as, high interest as possible. And so a lot of times, you might think you have a large cap stock fund or you have a emerging market fund, but if 8% of it's cash, well, yeah, 92% of it is an emerging market fund, but 8% of it's actually a cash fund. And so um, and that, and that could be a little bit misleading because you don't necessarily see that unless you look at the holdings. Um, and a lot of that didn't used to be the case as much when I started my career, but as more money has moved to ETFs and more money is leaving mutual funds, it does appear that the cash is going up which hurts return. Returns are lower if you have more money in cash, historically. Right, and with a mutual fund and an ETF, I mean, I know there are some managed ETFs, but that's one big difference in between both of them is a mutual fund has a manager and can be a little yeah, bit so more expensive. Most mutual funds have managers, so you're paying for somebody to beat, a, you're paying a professional to beat the market or, or to do better. And sometimes they do, but if you look at a 10 year period, about 90% of the time, owning an index makes more money than a managed fund. Because once you factor in the higher expense ratio, you know, I mean, a lot of our ETFs are 0.03%. Right. A lot of mutual funds are over 1%. So when you factor in, they can be that much more expensive, that hurts your return. Then you factor in all this cash sitting there earning very low rates. That's not very present in ETF because they don't have as much money cash. They do a little bit, but not as much. And so, that hurts the returns. Um, and since ETFs tend to be, you're trying to buy a whole section of the market versus trying to pay somebody to figure it out for you, 
Um, they tend to be lower cost, and historically they've made more money over the last, you know, you know, couple decades, and that's a big deal on average. There are some winners. There's always some exceptions, but that's just typically what you see. And if you get 90% of the time, I mean, that's pretty good in the investing world. Yeah, so what you're saying is if you effectively kind of if you pay for a, a manager, you're paying him to be in that 10% that beats the 90% of the ETFs yeah. and take on the extra, you know, difference in 0.03% expense ratio versus north of one, that 0.97%. And, and also, it excessive. doesn't necessarily mean that he beats it by one or 2%. He might just beat it by a small fraction. Yeah. So you're paying all that extra money and are you getting the return? And so, you know, we saw a lot um, in the year 2023, there were a few tech companies that really led the charge to make money for stocks. If you didn't own those companies, you know, one of them was NVIDIA and, and Apple, and so if you didn't own those companies in Microsoft, you didn't make much money that year. Yeah. So the risk you run from a diversification standpoint is, if you miss those best companies, you didn't make any money really. Yeah. So that's a big deal. And so if you're um, and, and ETFs too, there's equal weighted ETFs where they try to change. So not all ETFs are the same, but broadly speaking, if you look at the Dow or you look at the S&P or the NASDAQ and you own a one that owns the NASDAQ or owns the S&P, it's going to reflect what you're seeing. And right. I think it's important um, if your expectations are you own this, then I want to own this. Right. I don't own that. I want to own this. So that's where you want to be. Right. Perfect. Well, I think that uh, pretty well covers the difference in between ETFs and mutual funds and does that. So thank yeah. you for your time today and thank you for tuning in to Investment Insight. Thanks. Have a great day.